Good evening, church. Hello, check. Did I mess it up? There I am. Huh? All right. Let's pray, and we're going to get into the Word tonight. Amen. Father, we're so grateful to be in your house tonight. We thank you, Lord, that tonight we will be taught the Word of God. And I thank you, Father, that you have given us ears to hear, that you've given us eyes to see, that you have given us a heart to understand and to obey. So, Father, we thank you uh, for answers tonight. We thank you that our lives will be elevated by your word and by your truth. We receive it with gladness. We receive it with gladness tonight. And Father, I'm just asking you to have, to have your way, to minister grace to the hearers tonight. Minister grace to the hearers, the, the empowerment, uh, the ability to, to receive truth, to act on it and to overcome everything and anything that that any person would be facing tonight. there's, There's answers, there's a way out. There is a way out. And we thank you, Father, that in your word, you've given us the way out. Hallelujah, we thank you for it, Father, and we honor you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. So we're going to get right into it tonight. I hope that you brought your Bible. Like Landon said, I'm going to read a lot of scriptures. And uh, therefore, we're going to call it a success tonight because his word uh, will do the work. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to stay in the vein tonight of uh, Landon's last two Sunday messages, which is of faith, and then two previous Wednesdays, Wednesdays when I ta- uh, taught, we talked about God's will and God's ways. Anybody, we're, we're still remembering, and, and especially these last two Sunday messages. I heard a minister say once, uh, who, who is an amazing Bible teacher, been teaching, preaching, pastoring, Uh, for a number of years, but they made the statement that they so loved when they would go to meetings. How many of you know that pastors need pastors, right? Uh, That that they need uh, people that are speaking into their lives that they're submitted to, right? And she made the comment, she said, I love when uh, the message is on faith. Why is that? Because faith is our part. Faith is our part. Faith is our part. And so no matter how many messages, no matter what we think we know about faith, how many of you believe that there are still some things that we need to know, that we need to learn, that we need to understand, ways that we can learn more so that we're more skillful in living by faith. Amen? Which is, and, and I'm going to ask you, I may say some things uh, tonight, and I'm just going to ask you not to put the brakes on. Because a lot of times, especially when we're talking about the message of faith, uh, depending on what our experience has been, depending on a, a lot of what our experience has been, or other people's experience, or how we've been taught before, we can automatically uh, put the brakes on and say, "Mm mm-mm, that isn't right. So I'm going to ask you not to do that, and, and just to say, Lord, more than anything else, more than anything else, and me proving that I'm right and someone else is wrong, I want truth, Lord. I want truth. I want to live according to truth. Amen? Amen. So, uh, we know the scripture in 1 John 5, 4, and and I want to say this, as God's people, as God's people, the offspring of Almighty God, the offspring, and let me say this too, on Wednesday night, Wednesday night is a teaching night. You know, the, the majority, probably 100%, maybe not, but normally on a Wednesday night, everyone in here is born again. 
And so it's a teaching night for the building up and the equipping of the saints. Amen. Amen. And so as the offspring of Almighty God, a life of victory should be our mindset. It should be our mindset. It should be the flow of our lives. It should be what we expect and how we live. Say victory. First John 5, 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the... And this is the... That overcomes the world. And what is it? Our faith. Even our faith. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Uh, a, a similar one, let, let me read this <clears throat> before I comment. 2 Corinthians 2.14. Boy, I could preach here a long time. But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumph as trophies of Christ's. And through us, he spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. God intends for his people to live an overcoming, victorious life that preaches to the world. Hallelujah. We should be reflecting the victory of Christ that Christ won for us. Through us, through our victory. He spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. Amen. And so these two scriptures that we read uh, right here, it talks about overcoming the world, leads us in triumph. What does that mean? That means there's going to be some things to overcome. Amen. There's going to be tests. There's going to be trials. There's going to be opposition. And, and so where people have come up with, well, I just don't like the, uh, the message of faith because that is just not reality. Well, we're going to address that. Uh, we're going to uh, address that tonight. But nowhere in God's, every scripture that I read about victory, about overcoming, um, Every single one of them, all I see, all I see in the word is victory. All I see is overcoming, victory and overcoming. And sometimes we just settle. Sometimes we settle uh, for just good enough. Amen. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, 8, he said, we are hedged in, we are pressed on every side, we are troubled and oppressed in every way, but not crushed. But not crushed. What does that tell me? That tells me that no matter what is going on, on the outside, no matter what is going on in this natural realm, that as a child of God, there is something greater in me that pushes back on the pressure that's coming at me. That's the same for you too. The Word of God, the Spirit of Almighty God indwelling in you is greater than anything you face in this natural realm. We've got to remember, we have to remember that we are a spirit. We have a soul and we live in a body. And that this natural world, this physical world that we are presently living in came out of the spirit realm. Yes. There is a realm that is greater than what we can see with our natural eyes. Yes. Amen. And we need to condition ourselves as God's people to be aware of this at all times. Yes. At all times. Amen. So I want to quickly, I want to quickly uh, touch on this uh, before going into, into more of faith. And that's just uh, about the gospel. In Mark 16, 15, the Great Commission, the Lord Jesus gave his disciples. What was the Great Commission? Go into all the world and do what? And preach the gospel. 
go into all the world and preach the gospel. And preach the gospel. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. The preaching and teaching of the gospel is the most important thing that will ever happen on planet earth. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. I want us to turn to Romans 10 and and let's look at this. Romans 10 and we're going to start in verse 13. Romans 10, 13, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Isn't that good news? For whosoever, let's not make it complicated. Let's not put, uh, be putting stigma or expectations or hoops for people to jump through. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know that God is working overtime to get people into heaven. He's not trying to come up with a reason to keep people out. Hallelujah. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Verse 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Say glad tidings of good things. That's the gospel. The gospel is good news. We need to remind ourselves sometimes as Christians that the gospel is good news. It's good news. But they have not all all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? Verse 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing how? So what is the most important mandate on the face of the earth? To preach the gospel. To preach the gospel. More so, listen to me, more so, uh, more so than digging wells somewhere. More so, see, this, this can get a little offensive. More so than anything else that we do for any other person. I'm not saying that we don't do, that, that we don't minister to people's physical needs. We absolutely do. The most important thing is that we preach the gospel. Amen. And the gospel is good news. Uh, And it says, how shall they be sent? Uh, I mean, how shall they hear? How shall someone preach unless they be sent? Do you know that's what's happening when we give our life to the Lord and we're committed to Him and we're learning and we're growing and we're having more of Christ formed in us day by day by day? We, come more, we become more useful to Him for what? For the preaching of the gospel outside these four walls. For the preaching of the gospel. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 52, 7 in the Amplified says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good tidings, who publishes peace, who brings good tidings of good, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The gospel, the gospel, good news, peace. Good news, peace. I don't think I gave him that scripture. And some people don't like a good news gospel. Have you noticed that? Uh, Some people do not like a good news gospel. Ministers that preach the gospel and preach that in Christ you are more than an overcomer, you're more than a conqueror. In Christ, he always causes you to triumph. People don't like that. Some people. Some people don't like that. It's too much good. There's too much good. And the things that they see with their eyes, uh, they're bringing God down to their level. And they're saying, you need to balance it. You need to balance all of that good news with what? With their reality. 
what are we going to balance the good news with? What do you mean? What, what, how, how do we balance the good news? Okay. Uh, God always causes me to triumph in Christ Jesus. He's redeemed me from the curse of the law, which is from spiritual death and from sin and death and, and all the consequences of sin. He's redeemed me from that. What, so, so if it's heavy with the good news, what exactly are we going to put over here to balance, you know, the good news? What, what are we going to put over here? We're going to put works. Who said that? I know Rod did. Someone over here say works. What else? What'd you say? A garbage. Come on. Uh, that's right, garbage. What are we going to put over here to balance out the good news of the gospel? You know, we've got to get our theology from the Word. We need to get our theology from the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Romans ten seventeen. faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And uh, I'm just telling you, the preaching and the teaching of the Word, I'm going to say it again, is the most important thing that can happen in our lives, the sitting under the preaching and the teaching of the Word. That's why I said, when, uh, if, if we believe uh, that those that attend to His Word, that we're going to find life. Is that right? Yes. Then we're going to get ourselves to where the Word is being taught and the Word is being preached. It's going to be the most important thing in our lives, and that is above our children's social calendar. There will come a time when our children's social calendar is going to look very, very different than what it looks now. And in a, in a parent's heart, what we want more than anything is for them to have a foundation of the good news of the gospel of faith in their lives because we want them to be successful, don't we? We want them to be successful. A college education does not make our kids successful. Our kids playing in every sport on planet Earth does not make uh, them successful. Amen. And we as parents, sometimes we get duped. Uh, we get duped into believing, well, I've only got them for such a short period of time, so I need to just be with them. I need to do things with them uh, that makes them happy. Yes, we're sacrificing the house of God. Yes, we're sacrificing our spiritual growth and development, but we're going to spend this time with them. And we're going to come up short. And our kids are going to be the ones that suffer. Our kids will be the ones that suffer. I have never apologized to my kids that they were in church every Sunday and every Wednesday. Sunday, did y'all know we used to have church Sunday night? Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. The absolute best thing that we can, that we can do for our children. Amen. So faith in God, the God kind of faith that gets answers. Do y'all do believe that we're supposed to get answers 100% of the time? Yes, we absolutely are. And it's entirely dependent on what God says. It comes no other way. Faith that gets answers, faith that gets answers comes no other way but by what God says. We're going to talk about faith, and we're going to make sure that we have the right definition of what faith is. <clears throat> Excuse me. All through the Gospels, we see that Jesus did three things when he began his ministry at 30 years of age. Three things. He went about preaching, teaching, and healing all who came to him to be healed. Two-thirds Two-thirds of his ministry was preaching and teaching the kingdom. Preaching and teaching the kingdom. Amen. All right. So I'm going to say it one more time before I move on. The preaching and teaching of God's word is the most important thing on planet earth. And I said this one, one Wednesday. When we sit 
uh, and we listen to God's word being taught and uh, it doesn't thrill us on the inside. I don't care how many times we've heard it. All that means is that it's not on the inside of us. It's not a part of us. It's because God's word is lit, is living. It's energizing. It's, it's what causes me to overcome every situation. So no matter how many times I hear that word, it thrills me. Why? Because it's my way out. It, it, it's my victory. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So faith is a spiritual transaction between heaven and earth. Right? So faith deals with what we can't see. It deals with the invisible realm. Is that right? So with our natural eyes, we cannot see uh, into the spirit realm. Now, the Lord, through a gift of discerning of spirits, can help us to see sometimes into that spirit realm. But we'll never see the spirit realm with our natural eyes. So faith is how we interact with God, how we receive any and all things from God. It's by faith. It's not by accident, and it's not just because God decides to move on your behalf. It's by faith. Say, by faith. God is a faith God. Did you know that? God is a faith God. Romans 4, 17. <clears throat> Says that it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, which quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. So this is, God is a faith God. He will always be a faith God. See, sometimes we think we're just going to live by faith uh, while we're down here on earth. But when we get to heaven and on throughout the eons of ages, we won't live by faith anymore. That's not true. Our Father is a faith God. And as an offspring of Almighty God, we are a faith people that will live forever by faith. By faith. We don't want to be short-sighted. We don't want to be short, uh, short-sighted. <clears throat> In creation, God said, light be. Do y'all remember? When God created the heavens and the earth, and he said, let there be light or light be. He called for the light, didn't he? What he saw with his eyes was darkness, but he called for light. Light be. So get this, he called for something that was on the inside of him. Light was already on the inside of God the Father. And when he said light be, he called for the manifestation of what already existed in the spirit realm. Amen. That's how we are to operate. And we will, we will be living by faith throughout all of eternity. We will be calling those things that be not as though they were. Do you know when we go to heaven, um, we're not staying in heaven. Everybody know that? Yeah, so, so we're going to be there. We're going to be there for seven years, and then we're coming back to the earth. And we're ruling and we're reigning with him. There's going to be a job to do. And as his people, we are going to continue calling those things that be not as though they were. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, Romans 1.17, Galatians 3.11, we're going to look at some scriptures just about faith here in Hebrews 10.38. Romans 1.17, Galatians 3.11, Hebrews 10.38 says, The just shall live by faith. The just the justified, the ones saved, the ones born again, blood washed. It says we shall live by faith. Second Corinthians 5, 7, <clears throat> it says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. For we walk by faith and, and not how? The Good News Translation says, For our life is a matter of faith, not of sight. The voice translation says, the path we walk is charted by faith, not by what we see with our eyes. 
So we are to walk by faith and not by sight. How much living do we do walking by what we see? Walking by what we hear? Too much. I'm going to mention here the topic. Anybody else hot? I don't live by what I feel. The topic of being real, the topic of being real, or the topic of being, or, or fake. I want to mention this right here. People say things like, oh, I just love so-and-so. They're just so real. They are just so real. They just tell it like it is. And we, and we praise that. And we think that that is just really uh, so cool. And really, is that what we are wanting to celebrate? I mean, I've seen it. I've seen it over and over just recently. This week, I, I, I witnessed this. Oh, I just love this person. They are just so real. And so real, uh, meaning they just had a fit of carnality. And we're celebrating people being real. What, what does that mean? That means when, when I'm having a fit uh, of carnality or whatever, or I'm just venting, what am I venting about? I'm venting about what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling, what I'm hearing. I'm living by what I see. And the Bible calls that being carnal. Being a carnal Christian, live, oh, oh but, but we just celebrate and we just love these people. Are just, they're just so real. They just tell it like it is. They just tell it uh, like they see it. Can I tell you that being a spiritual person and walking by faith is not fake? Just because there is a people who take God at his word and call those things that be not as though they were and refuse to live by sight does not mean that they're fake. Amen. It means that these people are living according to a higher reality than what is in this natural realm. Hallelujah. And in our endeavors of trying to be real and not being fake, that, uh, that we keep calling it like we see it. Well, I don't want to be fake, you know. I mean, it is what it is. So, you know, if, if I say it isn't, well, like Lennon said, faith isn't calling. Uh, if something is there, we're not pretending or calling that it's not there. Faith calls it that there is a higher truth that supersedes whatever is there. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Romans 8, 6 through 8. Let's turn to Romans 8, please. It says, For to be carnally minded, verse 6, is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. All right. For to be carnally minded, what is that? To be aware, to, to be thinking, and to order our lives according to this natural realm, according to what we see with our natural eyes, according uh, to how we feel, how our feelings are. To be carnally minded is what? Yeah. To be carnally minded is what? Yeah. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So there is a higher reality for the people of God to live by. Hallelujah. And it says when to be spiritually minded, to be aware of the spirit realm, to be aware of what God's, you, did you know that God's in the spirit realm? I mean, none of you seen him out here walking around, right? In the earth. No, no. God is a spirit. He's in the spirit realm to be spiritually minded, to have our, my mind and my affections and the reality by which I live for it to be set upon him and upon his word is life and peace. Verse seven. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh 
cannot please God. Verse 8 in the Amplified says, So then those who are living the life of the flesh, catering to the appetites and impulses of their carnal nature, cannot please or satisfy God or be acceptable to Him. Why is that? Hebrews eleven six 6 tells us, Because without faith it is what? Impossible to please God. So there is no pleasing God when we are led by our natural senses, when we are making decisions according to uh, what we see and hear and feel and touch in this natural arena. Say, there's a higher reality for me. Amen. Amen. John 20, 29. Excuse me says, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. So this is what Jesus told Thomas when Thomas said, yeah, I, you know, I'm not going to believe that Jesus is risen unless I see the, the nails in his hand, the nail prints in his hands and, and hit in his side, right? <clears throat> and, and Jesus looked at him and he said, now that you've seen me, you believe. But you know what? Faith Faith always deals with the invisible realm. You know, the invisible. The spirit realm is invisible. That's what faith deals with. Once you see it, you don't need faith. Right? But he said, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. I think I've told this story here before, but it it bears repeating. I feel like the story of a woman who had been called back to the doctor's office because they wanted to do some more, uh, some more tests. They had found a spot on her breast, and they wanted to do another, uh, another scan to look at it. And so she was in the exam room, and they were doing an ultrasound. And as they were doing it, um, the doctor turned the screen to her, and, see, and he said, see this spot right here. This is the, the spot that we, are, that we are concerned about. This was a Christian woman laying there. And in herself, she said, oh, God, if I just hadn't have seen it. You know, she wasn't feeling symptoms uh, of it, you know. And, and it was like she just said, if I just hadn't seen it. Uh, how much easier it would be uh, to believe your word. I mean, you know, have we, have we all felt like that before? Uh, that we're wanting to avoid things because we're wanting to be in faith, but we think if I see something, it's going to rob me of my faith. Do you know what I'm saying? She said, if I just hadn't have seen that, and she heard the Spirit of the Lord on the inside of her say, is what you see greater than what I say? Is what you see greater than my word? And she said, oh, she said, Lord, no. She said, forgive me. Now she's doing this inside, in, inside herself. She said, Lord, forgive me. Nothing is greater than your word. Nothing. She said, at that moment, uh, they said there was a, <clears throat> a light on the monitor that just circled the area and it just, it it came closer and closer, a smaller and smaller zeroing in on that spot. And when the light was gone, uh, the spot was gone as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so what a question to ask ourselves. Um, Rachel, is what you see greater than God's word? Is, is what you see, is what you've experienced, what you hear, is it greater than God's Word? No. <clears throat> Romans 12, 3, let's go there. At the very end, it says, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. I'm sorry, guys.
according, thank you, Daniel, <clears throat> according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So no born again person, listen, the moment that you are born again, God puts his faith on the inside of every man. His faith, his faith. When we are born again and recreated in his image, God himself recreates our spirit being in the very substance with the very same substance that makes God, God. And he puts his faith on the inside of you. The measure. No person gets more faith than another person. God puts within every born again believer, born again person, the measure of faith. Say amen. Y'all are looking at me like a little calf at a new gate or something. <clears throat> the measure of faith. Amen. And God's own faith. In Mark eleven twenty two, where it says, have faith in God, the margin of that Bible says to have the faith of God, have the faith of God. So it's not even, listen, <laughs> God says without faith, it's impossible to please him, but he doesn't leave us up to our own devices to get our own faith. He, he, <laughs> he is the one that gives us the faith. Amen. Amen. He puts his faith on the inside of us. Now, truly, every person, it doesn't matter what side of the tracks you were born on. It doesn't matter what your life experience has been. You got the same measure of faith that every other born-again person got. And it is a measure of God's himself, his own faith. Now, what we do with that faith is a matter of our will, our worship, our uh, commitment to the Lord. We can grow in that faith. We can develop that faith. Amen. Amen. Some people stay, they live their whole lives just at the door of saving faith just at the door of saving faith, becoming born again, that's it, I'm going to heaven, there's no more. But we know in God's word that we can grow in faith, that we can develop in our faith. And, and one of the most fundamental ways of growing in our faith is being a doer of the word. Every time, every time we hear the word, we apply it and we do it. What is that? That's building our faith. That's strengthening our faith. Amen. And it doesn't take a lifetime to develop strong faith. Uh, I will never forget, <clears throat> I don't know, 2017, when was it, Janice, that we were having the Bible study upstairs? Uh, around, uh, around in there. And, and so her being born again, but not really being around the word uh, and faith being taught and, and, uh, and that you can overcome and be more than a conqueror. And she was dealing with back pain at the time. She could barely get up these stairs, but she got up she came, to, she came to the Bible study, and, and the scripture, I may be butchering this. One of these days, you can straighten it out if you need to. But uh, she got a hold of the scripture that says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Amen. Christ has redeemed And so she found out in Deuteronomy 28 that sickness, disease, back pain was under the curse. And so what she did, she just acted on it. She believed it, and she acted on it. I have never seen spiritual growth so fast. <clears throat> and, and that is what her journey uh, from there on out was all about. Hearing the word and being a doer of the word. Hearing the word and applying the word. Hearing the word and applying the word. That's how we develop faith muscles. That's how when the pressures of life come, uh, to try to take us out, that there's something greater on the inside of us that pushes back. Amen. But we'll never develop in faith unless we become that doer of the word. 
We hear it and we do it. We hear it and we apply it. It, it makes me think of a story Brother Keith told about, about a woman in healing school and she had never heard the word preached that you mean that healing already belongs to me and all I have to do is receive it from God. And he, he was given scriptures, you know, and he said, that's right. And she said, well, thank you, God. I believe I receive. She was healed. I believe I receive. I believe I receive. I'm telling you, that needs to be our posture. This needs to be our posture. I believe I receive. I believe I receive. We're going to get more into that. There's, can y'all take some more? <clears throat> Good, I have three more pages. <clears throat> so faith is coming into agreement with God. Let's turn to Luke 1. Gosh, another one of my favorite passages. This is the story of when the angel Gabriel came and, and visited Mary. Uh, let's start in verse uh, 31. Uh, I'm reading this in the Amplified, and I think I told you King James. Sorry, Brad. <clears throat> verse 31. And listen, you will become pregnant and will give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his uh, forefather David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob throughout the ages, and, his reign there w and of his reign there shall be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I uh, have no intimacy with any man as a husband? Husband, Then the angel said unto her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Let's go to verse 37. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Verse 38. And Mary said, And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. God is looking. Do you know that, that Mary got pregnant with the Son of God based on one thing? Her agreement with the word that was brought to her by the angel Gabriel from the, from the throne room of God. She got pregnant with the promise of the Messiah by coming into agreement with God's eternal word. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Verse 37 in the Amplified said, For with God nothing is ever impossible, and no word from God shall be without power or impossible of Fulfillment. We're going to talk about being pregnant with God's Word. Do you know that is how faith works? That is how faith works. We receive from God, from His Word. We re with, with the hand of faith, I'm getting ahead of myself, but with the hand of faith, we receive what that Word says into our spirit being and we become pregnant with the promise of God. And we're pregnant with it in our spirit man. But we get real messed up because we think receiving means manifestation. Hold on with me just a second, okay? Pregnant with the word. Verse 45, And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Mary got pregnant with the Son of God by coming into agreement and by her saying, Be it unto me according to your word, the word from God. Sounds like faith to me. Amen. Amen. 
Um, Uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna mention this and then we're gonna move on. I want to get to some to some other things, but we've got to know this that God is always ahead of our need. Amen. One of the one of the best phrases that I heard from Billy Brim, I've heard her preach it and I've read it in her books, and that is uh, God never plays catch up with the devil, never. The Lord Jesus Christ was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Amen. So before the need in your life ever came up, God was ahead of that need and has already provided for it. Amen. That was a little weak. Amen. Hebrews 4, 1 through 3, and it talks about the Hebrews and their, um, their well, their unsuccessful trek from Egypt to the promised land. And in verse 3, I'm just going to, well, no, in verse 2. No, i got to read one. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still holds and is offered today, let us be afraid to distrust it, lest any of you should think he has come too late and has come short of reaching it. For indeed, we have had the glad, glad tidings of the gospel proclaimed to us, just as truly as the Israelites of old did when the good news of deliverance from bondage came to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them because it was not mixed with faith. Say, it did not benefit them because it was not mixed with faith. Does faith matter? Does your faith matter? Are you going to receive the promises of God any other way? Were you born again any other way than faith? By grace through faith. Amen? Amen. So if we had to be born again by faith, it surely uh, goes without saying that every other benefit, every other benefit uh, that he has given unto us through our salvation and our redemption is going to be realized by faith. Amen. Amen. And it says, because it was not mixed by faith by those who heard it, neither were they united in faith with the ones, Joshua and Caleb, who, uh, who heard and did believe. And I'm just going to tell you, it matters if you're going to be a person of faith, if you are going to live by faith, it matters who you hang out with. It matters who, uh, let me, it matters who you unite yourself with. I'm not saying that we separate ourselves from the world and we're not being a light in the world and, we, and, uh, and there's not some relationships, but the people that you hang out with and you unite yourself to, you better be uniting yourself to people of faith. Amen. Amen. If you want to receive miracles, if you want to receive all of the promises of God in your life, it matters who you're hanging out with. Amen. <clears throat> so his will or his word to them was for them to possess the promised land. Amen. And uh, he had already given it to them. Hadn't he already said it's yours? He had already given. He had gone ahead. He had already caused uh, the people in that land. They lost courage and they lost strength because they had heard of the God of Israel and the mighty things that he had done for them. So God had gone ahead. He had given them the land and he was making, them, making a way for them to go into the land and to possess it. But they chose to be a people that believed more in what they saw than what God said. And they forfeited the very promise of God in their lives. All but Joshua and Caleb. Amen. 
I want to go back to verse 3 in, in Hebrews uh, 4. It says, For we who have believed do enter that rest in accordance with his declaration that those who did not believe should not enter when he said, As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And this he said, although his works had been completed and prepared and waiting for all who would believe from the foundation of the world. Boy, that's a big one, you guys. He said his works had been completed and prepared and waiting. His works had been uh, completed and prepared and waiting for the Israelites to take hold of, to go in and to possess. So God, his intent and his will was for them to possess the land. God gave it, but man's part, our faith, is that we hook up with God's word and we lay hold of what he said is already ours. Amen. So his way of possessing, his way of possessing the promised land was by faith. His way of us possessing the promises of God, victory in every situation is by faith. And he's already made the way. He's already supplied it. Amen. He's already given it. Let's read in Ephesians 1, 3. And um, we're going to stay here for just, uh, for the end here, but we're going to stay in this place for the last bit of the service. Ephesians 1, 3. In the King James, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. In King James, it says, Who hath, we would say has, blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So we see this as past tense. Correct? Y'all awake? Y'all need to stand up and shake or anything? This is important. God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I do love the Norley translation of this uh, Ephesians 1.3. It says, Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing that heaven itself enjoys. Glory to God. He's already. Say, he's already. already. He's already blessed me. He's already given unto me. Everything that heaven itself enjoys. Amen. So everything that heaven itself enjoys is where? It's in the spirit realm. Isn't that right? It's in the spirit realm. And all blessings come from the spirit realm. So just the unseen realm, the invisible realm, however, however we want to say it. Uh, the unseen, the invisible, but just because it's unseen and just because it's invisible doesn't mean it's unreal. Again, I'm going to go back that we as God's people, we've got to develop in and train ourselves in being a spiritual people and not a carnal people. Amen. All right, I'm going to read it how I've written it. Uh, Father Utterance, and thank you for light and wisdom and, and revelation. So the act... The act of releasing your faith and receiving from God is a spiritual transaction. Right? Okay. The act of releasing your faith and receiving from God is a spiritual transaction. Meaning you release faith from your spirit man or from your heart... You reach into the spirit realm where that promise with your name on it has already been laid up for you. All right? And then you receive that promise into your spirit man. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this again because I don't know about you, but I've been hung up here before, okay? And, and, and so um, I'm going to read it again. The act of releasing your faith and receiving from God is a spiritual transaction, meaning you release faith from your spirit man. Where do we get faith? From hearing God's word, from hearing what God says, right? We hear what God says. We, we see and we hear a promise from God. We release faith. You release faith from your spirit man or your heart and you reach into that spirit realm where it already uh, is. Remember we said that uh, God's ahead of your need, that he never plays catch up with the devil, that everything you need for your life, everything, every answer, everything for your, that, that you have need of is already like... Just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not real. It's in the spirit realm with your <coughs> name on it. And so we, we release the faith from our heart. We reach into the spirit realm where the promise is. And then we receive that promise into our spirit man. Everything, all of our dealings with God is spirit. He talks to us in our spirit. Amen. He leads us by his spirit. He lives in our spirit. So he doesn't lead us uh, in our head. He doesn't lead us by circumstances. He doesn't, he doesn't lead us by anything in this natural realm. It's spirit to spirit. Spirit to spirit. And everything, every promise of God, every promise of God already exists in that spirit realm. So we need to know how to get it in, uh, in the natural realm. Is that right? Okay, <clears throat> so. I'm going to stay by my notes here. So listen, we, we've got to have the right definition of faith. Amen. We have to have the right def definition of faith because... Um, the wrong definition will leave us empty. Uh, I don't know how else to say it. The wrong definition of faith will not arrive us at the promises of God. How many of you believe that, that God intends for you to receive his promises? Yes. Amen. Amen. So faith, write this down. Faith that receives. We're talking about faith that receives from God is not believing that God can. That's not faith. Believing, faith that receives from God is not believing that God can. Faith that receives from God is not believing that God is going to. And I'm confident that you, I know I have, have been there many times. Oh, yeah, this is my present condition, but I just believe that God is going to. God is going to. Faith is right now. So faith is believing that God has already done it for me. Therefore, it's my now. God does it for me now. So remember, he's already laid up for us everything that pertains to life and godliness. All, every need of our lives is already laid up in uh, the spirit realm. So faith is what, according to 11, uh, Hebrews 11, 1? Faith is now. Faith is now. Faith is now. So faith is believing that God has already given. So it's mine now. I receive it now. All right. Now then, Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire. This helped me immensely. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So when are we uh, supposed to believe that we receive them? 
When we pray, when we pray, believe that we re receive them. I've done this. Oh my gosh, I have so done this. All right, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And you're just trying and trying. Lord, I see that promise in your word. And I'm just, I just believe. I believe that I receive. I believe that I receive. I believe that I receive. And then I'm checking in the natural realm to see that I receive. Do you, do you know, ever been there? And you think, what is wrong with my faith? So then we get into uh, living a life of waiting on God. Of waiting on God. Now just hang with me. This is going to tie in to Landon's mes message on Sunday. But we confuse. We, we uh, remember I said that Faith that receives from God is a spiritual transaction. We reach into the spirit realm and we lay hold of the promise and we receive it. We become pregnant. We receive the promise in our spirit man. At the time we pray in faith, we receive. Amen. Amen. At the time we pray, we receive. But many, many, many times, whether we say this or not, we have interpreted Mark eleven twenty four 24 like this. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that it manifests and you shall have them. Believing is a spirit, believing and receiving is a spiritual transaction. It's not a physical transaction. We're looking for a manifestation instead of believing that we've received the promise that's already laid up for us. We received it in our spirit, man. It is mine now. Amen. And if we'll hang on to that posture, if we won't let go of our faith, which is what he was talking about, by faith and patience, by faith and patience, uh, it, the promise will come into manifestation. But how many times have we let go of our faith? The promise, how many times has the promise been on the inside of you? Yet, I mean, Landon, let's see, what did he say? The promise isn't diminished in the waiting. That was in a scripture in the message. Uh, I don't know where it was. But the promise is not diminished in the waiting, which is very, very true, but we can abort the promise. We can abort the promise. We can let go of faith. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so, and, and so what we received when we prayed, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that it is mine now. I rejoice. I thank you, Father, for healing. I thank you for uh, whatever, healing in my back, healing in my leg. Father, I thank you. I, 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 I just, I thank you. I, I believe I receive. I believe that I receive. And we receive it now. Faith is now. Faith, believing and receiving is a spiritual transaction. It has nothing to do with the natural realm. But God is watching over his word to perform it. And if our hold of faith and our thanksgiving in our heart will hang on to what God said and to what we received, it will manifest in the natural realm. Amen. Did that make sense to anybody? D does that help you? Amen. I receive it now. God has already laid up for me everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything that heaven itself enjoys is mine right now. It's mine right now. I'm not waiting on God. I'm not believing that he can. I I'm not waiting on him to do it at, at some point. It's mine now. And so I'm going to walk and I'm going to live like it's mine now. And I'm telling you on God's authority of his word, it will come to pass. It will manifest in the physical, in the natural realm. Amen. So between the time 
that we exercise our faith and that I believe I receive. It's mine now. It's mine now. I'm not waiting for it. I'm not looking for it. I'm not waiting on you to do something. What in the world do we think God is going to do? What in the world do we think God needs to do for us to receive our healing or the answer to our prayers? What, what, what more does Jesus need to do? He already took our sins. He removed them from us as far as the east is from the west. Our sickness and infirmities and our diseases was laid upon the Him and He carried them away. He was made poor so that we could be made rich. Hallelujah. What more? We, we think we're waiting on God. We're not waiting on God. Just let your faith reach out, lay hold and say, it's mine now. Amen. 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 So between the time you receive it, and that is a spiritual act, and the time it manifests in the natural realm, we've got some more walking and living by faith to do. Amen. Uh, you know, live, we live by faith. It's not, you know, we don't go up to a cash register and make a transaction with God and then walk off and, and live some other way. We live by faith. We live by faith. Amen. So it's important that we keep the faith flowing. It's important that we keep the flow of faith going in, in, in our hearts. <clears throat> and thanksgiving. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, just a few more minutes. Thanksgiving. Uh, thanking God, praising Him, worshiping Him will help keep our hearts in the position uh, th that we're just on ready, right? That, that we're just on ready, that, that our faith is, it, that faith is flowing, is working, amen? We're told to fight the good fight of faith. What does that mean? That means the word that you received in your heart that brought faith to you, uh, for the promise that you're believing God for, the enemy of your soul is after that word. He's after that word. Mark 4, the parable of the sower. But he's after the word that you're pregnant with because the last thing he wants is for that baby to be born. So he's after the word. So what do we do? We fight the good fight of faith. And every thought, every thought that comes to us that is contrary to what God said, we got to pay attention. We can't toy around with just any thought that comes to us. We've got to answer it. We answer it with the Word of God. Amen? Amen? Continuing to live by faith, even, even if, you know, have you ever exercised some faith and gotten a little bit of relief? We don't want to be Christians who are just looking for relief. We want to go to victory. Yeah. Amen. And the enemy does his best to talk us into, uh, okay, you've gotten a little bit of relief, a little bit of the pressure is off, and then we lay our faith down. We lay our faith down in, instead of arriving uh, at the full promise. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Have you ever said, I said this a couple of weeks ago, have you ever said, I'll be so glad when this test or trial is over with. I'm so tired of having to work so hard to be in faith. Have you ever been in a situation where you're trying to be in faith, you're trying to be in faith, but it's been overwhelming? Yeah. Has Right? Uh, surely we all have. You know, you've just felt overwhelmed by it all. Uh, and why is that? Because we're trying to believe and be in faith with our mind. From up here, not from here. Faith isn't in our mind. Say, faith is not in my mind. Faith is in our heart. And so the enemy of our soul, he works to draw us up from our spirit man into the mental arena because that's his arena. And that's where thoughts are going to come. Amen. Amen. Uh, so faith is not in our mind. Faith is of, of the heart. And that goes back, it goes back to the... Um, 
Joshua 1, 8 scripture about not letting the word depart from our mouth, that it's always in our mouth, that, that we meditate on it, that we uh, day and night. And what is that? What is meditating? You know, we're, all, we're talking the word, we're meditating because we don't want, our mind has to be renewed with the word so that our mind is not constantly wrestling with our spirit man. Yeah. Amen. 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 But faith is not of the mind. Faith is of the heart. So we meditate and we talk the word so that we drive that word down into our spirit man where faith is. Amen. Amen. And, um, and so <clears throat> we talked just a, a couple of things there, but, but we've got to know that there are enemies to our faith. Remember, we're called to walk and live by faith, not just visit it every now and then, but to walk and to live by faith. And there's enemies to the last thing we want to do when we've come before the Lord and we've performed the act of believing and receiving and laying hold of his good promises for our life. The last thing that we want is for something to be in our heart, in our spirit man, where faith is, where we're pregnant with the promise. We don't want anything in there that's blocking or sitting on our faith, do we? You know, unforgiveness is a faith blocker. Strife and division is a faith blocker. A, a, a fence, a fence is a faith blocker, you know? So there's just things that we, uh, that we have to be aware of if we're serious, if we're serious about laying hold of everything that the Lord Jesus Christ made available for us, then we give our attention to our spiritual life. We can't just live any way we want to live and expect our faith to be flowing <clears throat> unhindered. Amen? Amen. Well, I think I'm going to stop there. Did you get anything at all from it? Amen. Stand with me. So, Father, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for the precious spirit of God, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Father, I'm asking you to flood the eyes of our heart with light in the knowledge of who you are. Hallelujah. Father, because there's things that we need to know. There's things that we need to understand. And you said the, the, the spirit of God the spirit of truth and wisdom and revelation will bring us into the knowing, the understanding of the hope to which we've been called. That it'll bring us into the understanding of the greatness of your inheritance in the saints. It'll bring us into the understanding of the unlimited, surpassing greatness of your power that is at work within us and for us and through us who believe. Hallelujah. So Father, I apply the blood of Jesus over these people and these, uh, these precious families represented here tonight. Oh Father, you said you would take us from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Our desire is to be pleasing unto you. Our desire is to walk in the fullness of your provision, of all that you have made us to be, of all that you have provided for us. That, oh God, that every pressure, everything that exalts itself in our lives that's against the knowledge of God. Father, that we don't just take it, but we address it with, it is written. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And through our victory in Christ Jesus, through our victory, you spread and make evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. The knowledge of your goodness, the knowledge of your all surpassing, all encompassing victory for all of mankind. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I thank you, Father, for it. Oh, just grow us, Lord. Grow us and develop us by your word and by your spirit that we would be a people. Uh, The end time army that walks according to faith, according to faith in the earth, accomplishing all that you have preordained for us to accomplish. Father, I thank you that it's not in our own trying, but it, it, it is you at work within us, both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We magnify you, Lord. We magnify you. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, for strength strength in the inner man, every person and every family in the name of Jesus. You be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We honor you. We bless you, Father, even as we lay our heads down tonight, that you would continue by your spirit talking unto us. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you that you are a God. You're not a man that you should lie. If you have not, if you've spoken it, will you not fulfill it? You are a God that watches over your word to perform it. Glory to God. So that your word, Lord, would dwell richly in our hearts. That your word, O oh God, the eternal almighty God, that your word would dwell richly in our hearts. The same word that Mary became pregnant by, carrying the Son of God in her womb. Oh, Father. That we would believe your word that we would take your word, that we would act upon your word, that we would be pregnant with your word. And we thank you for it, Father, that it will come to pass. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.